When you all read the book, I think you'd be amazed that by the kind of momentum of the story, it moves really quickly. And one of the things that maybe wasn't unusual then, but it is unusual now, is you just wrote songs really quickly. You know, like one rehearsal, four or five songs came together really quickly. Obviously, um, it was Malcolm who turned Foxy onto punk music, I think. You know, he, he played in, you know, he played, he was into obviously Led Zepp and Hendrix or whoever, and, and, and basically it's almost like everything gelled with him the moment he just changed the context in which well, he was he, playing. And he really wasn't uh, averse to that, he was looking for something, he, you know, the same as you, like the Pink Fairies and stuff like that. And it was always a, or was that been really hard side of it. And Malcolm was a DJ basically, so Malcolm used to just love records. And, you know, there's a story in the book where someone gives him Steve Hillish L, which we were, we were kind of listening to at the time, and he just laughs. <laughs> and he goes, laughs, he said, his guitar's not even plugged in. He's like, <laughs> no, Malcolm, and then Malcolm got rid of his whole collection and just got into punk, which is uh, amazing. Really. Well, he did get, he still had, he probably hid one or two records. <laughs> <laughs> Instead of a very eclectic. Well, whenever you used to go around, and you'd go around and listen to, I mean, later on, Man Machine, you know, a car float, and you go, Amazing and these amazing speakers. And that story's, I don't remember that story's in the book where they used to live in orchard cottages and the two doors used to face each other. The bloke came over, knocked on the door and said, Turn it down! And he just went, The bloke was in his pajamas and Matt just punched him. <laughs> he, went, he went back in the thing and he went over and shut the door and just carried on. That's <laughs> <laughs> yeah. no, not yeah. in the book, but thanks for telling us <laughs> that. <laughs> don't need to get it. Friends, um, Miss Misty and Roots. Um, who, you know, we owe, I mean, people, you know, we owe, we owe a hell of a lot to, to, to Mr. Bruce. Um, they, they paid for the recording of it and, and gave it to us. Thank you, Chris. They did, yeah. They, 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 Thank they, you, Smokes. Yeah, they, and uh, so they paid for it and Smokes is here and Chris Holmes here. Um, and um, they paid for it and, and of course it, it took us about a year to get the money to actually press it and release it and stuff. Which we did. So that's why it came out quite late in 79. It was made in 78, yeah, and then it was just sitting there. We didn't really, we, it's the first time through, we didn't know what we were doing. And our guy, Andy, who we went on to be our manager, said, How much is it going to cost? It was 100 quid, I think. Yeah, but it was like, you know, that's nothing. Like, he sold his he car, sold, he sold a load of gold. He, he used to be working, he was okay when he, he was quite um, affluent when he met us. But then, uh, <laughs> 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 he was a real jet lad. He shipped. I'm not He was a proper jet lad. He wasn't really uh, sort of used to drive a bit like in a BMW. But we ended up working in a bit of a And he had loads of gold. I don't he was like a really nice guy. A bit of a soul boy. But, um, I don't like music much, but he's a good thing. You're really good at it. You're really good at it. But, uh, but he did in the end, it was great. And the, the funny thing was, I mean, you said about this week, but the Ruts only lasted three years. I mean, this current, our current form of Ruts DC has been going longer than the Ruts did. It went really, really quick. Mm -hmm. So, like I said, so the songwriting was really quick. A lot of it was done on, it was a very urgent time, a lot of energy around. I mean, it was something for jamming and coming up with lyrics that would all chuck it up a bit. And it, was, it just seemed very important. But back then, you, really none of us thought we'd really live past her. I mean, genuinely. I'm not sure we weren't alone. But you know, you had the 1984 book. And we really believed it would all be over. But because the world, I mean, it's still. Well, the world and our lives and everything. It'd all be over. It was. I did it down there. I was 59 years old. And uh, I woke up for the day before. I was like, 15. I'm older than you. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I woke up and I thought, on the actual day, I woke up and thought, actually, yeah, well, I don't know what you're pissed off about. This is fantastic, you know. You're still alive, and you've got feels all you know, and it's like, it's and I didn't even, past 40, you didn't even think about it. I mean, 21 was. We're going to do the 50th day. <laughs> that is one of the amazing things about kind of pop and rock music in its early days, because of course the Beatles and the Stones thought they'd have two or three years, and if they'd realised it would go on for as long, they'd have made a lot of different decisions. You know, we all would have. But yeah, yeah. You're young, and um, there is a sense throughout the book where you know it is you're making sometimes good decisions and sometimes bad decisions because you just don't know what's going to happen the next day, and of course things. 
things build up really quickly and then they fall apart really quickly, don't they? And, and, and it's interesting because chatting to these guys now, you've only really come to an understanding of how it fell apart and when and the kind of chronology. Probably only now. My dear friend Lee, who wears nobody's shoes but his own.
Essential. Essential. No, it's okay. So there's a bit of a turning point in our career. I don't like this song, but there's uh, a reason for that. So uh, we were kind of, as Malcolm was in a bad bit of a bad state, and uh, we just wanted to carry on writing. So we came up with this, and it became the first Rusty C single. Called Different View. Right, so Check out. So Ooh. this is not a bad version, no, 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 no. You know what's your I like the acoustic, you know. Might end up being too loud. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. Quite a bit. One, two, one, two, three. Without being Foxy and I doing the depth for, uh, do you remember Eddie Kidd, the, the stunt motorcycle? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm getting really embarrassed now. But anyway, he was doing it, and Angel was, was doing the producing it, and he needed a guy vocal on it, and you know, no one could do it. So since winning, 
and, and did it, and he'd never done anything that we, we knew, as far as we knew musically before, but he did a really good version of it. And uh, anyway, we, we didn't. So then one of the first songs Malcolm wrote with Paul, uh, we did four songs, they're, they're, they're kind of punked by numbers, but this is the, our favourite. I've mean, never ever played it, and it's called Lobotomy. We're going to play a bit of it, and then what well, then you just show you how quickly now. we developed into uh, <laughs> a heroine. It didn't take long. Yeah, and then, and then we, we're going to segue it into another song that we made at the big side of it. About it was it really on Old Brompton Road, was it? <laughs> no, it was all in A's. It wasn't your man, man. Don't start causing trouble. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Clarence Bacon was going to be a bit, he's a bit of a troublemaker. So. <laughs> <laughs> no, we nearly got him here, didn't we, Chris? We did. Next time. Next time. Next time. Volume two. Yeah. <laughs> so we're going to play this one, but there's always a couple of good couplets in it. Oh, yeah. Uh, just listen out for the decent couplets. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here we go. <laughs> yeah. What's the couplet? I don't know. <laughs> 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 We're supposed to stick the intro, aren't we? We're supposed to stick the intro. That's alright, we could have put it in there, though. Put it in there. We imagine you haven't seen that, right? Yeah, okay. Can we go straight into the Come on, Sandra? No, go on, go on. You want to do it? Oh, I'll have a bit. Okay. One, two, three, four. One, two.
clean and no one tells you what they've seen your life will be in their eyes. Hold it there, can you smile? Shoes. The big shoes. The big shoes. Uh, the first few shows we did, I think I must have heard the, uh, the people would often come up to me and go, you know, you're get, you've got you're in very big shoes. You know that, don't you? And I was going to be, we were saying we were going to get some big shoes, some crossed big shoes on the advertising. Yes, um, it's an extraordinary thing to be part of. And as someone who, who you know was a fan of the band when I was at school and, and, and followed, followed Paul's playing after uh, the Ruts as well and knew him locally and that. It's, uh, it's quite a thing. There, 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 there's some great riffs and, there, and there's some great playing on those records. And uh, I, I, I used to spend a lot of time sitting on the end of my bed trying to play along with it. And strangely enough, I'm still playing. <laughs> 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 so, I've got less room now. I've got less room now. That's it. It's a, you have less room than I had then. So it's it's a, it's, a, it's quite a, a, an odd little, odd little thing. But, but to find but Lee knew Paul as well. Didn't yeah, that's right. Yeah, I knew Paul. There's like a lot of strange. You were talking earlier about this family thing's kind of spooky stuff or the mumbo jumbo <laughs> six, I don't know what to call it but six, six actually but Fort Fox used to play you, you know generally he's known as playing Gibson guitar, but back in the early days he used to play a Stratocaster and when he was down on his luck years after he sold it and, uh, and Lee spotted it in the shop and he's actually the owner of Fox's guitar yeah, yeah, which is a couple of years after Paul sold we'll think of some of you but it's quite weird it's, it's quite interesting Fox, it's really good man uh, so I do have Paul's old Strat, which you see him on top of the pops, Babylon's Bird. Yeah. 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 Strat's case. Yes. <laughs> but not not because I haven't got room for it. But, yeah. 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 So I do actually have that Strat that comes. Yeah. And, uh, fantastic. Kind of, kind of. It sounds a bit strange, but kind of reunited Paul with it, which was kind of quite a, quite a moment. Well, and uh, we were both blubbing like girlings. It was, yeah. it was, it was true. Oh, I've got something to show you, and there it was. And he went, L10186, I don't believe it. <laughs> don't, this is my guitar. But to be pedantic, Paul, it's mine. <laughs> <laughs> So we came to an agreement. That Never trust a hippie. <laughs> uh, and then we came to an agreement that uh, this sound might sound really poncy, but we were quite poncy. Uh, we, we we decided it was our guitar. Uh, <laughs> uh, you were looking after it. Like, you know it still is. Yeah, oh, yeah. So, yeah, I do that's true. I'm going to throw this over to you guys in a couple of seconds. So um, get get ready to stick your paws up. But one thing that strikes me about this story is. To use a horrible American word, it has closure. You know, there's something very beautiful about the story and getting back together with, with Foxy at the end. And there's a lot of sad moments in the book. There's, the, there's kind of um, what happens to Andy Damon, another sort of um, inspirational figure who worked his ass off for the band and he's no longer with us. But you did get what we don't always get in life in all of this. You did get closure with the people who are no longer with us, didn't you? Tell us about that. Well, we've got closure, I mean, through the book, we've got closure, really. And it, it, it's been, the, these last two years have been so emotional, really. Because we did have the closure, yeah, like I told the story about Fox, yeah, we did have the closure with Melbourne, but the, the closure with lots of other people that were involved. And, uh, I mean, you just, I'm reading the book, and I didn't know that about, you know, <laughs> Ruffy and Ruffy saying the same thing. And my sister wrote me up today, she said, uh, I'm not five years older than you, I'm four and a half years older than you. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and I didn't know that thing about that dad's cancer on his lip. He never told me. You know, so that's just in the first that's in the first chapter. So there's a lot of that going on. It, it's, it's made a lot of uh, it's made a lot of it made a lot of beauty happen and uh, I guess that's what we're about really and you know, that for people unite. Like, what more can you say? You know, that's that's good. So there's there's been closure and I'm, I'm so happy for that. And uh, now but we've got to move on. Yeah. <laughs> what do we do next? Keep your lights in. Let's get some. Crazy. 
People who didn't drink, never took drugs. Yeah, like us, really. The fact is, we never did it. So, very, very true to that. Him, like people like him and Ian Mackay were like that. So, when he was there with us, and he, but he, he, does, he drinks a pile of Diet Coke, which has got to be worse for you. Know? <laughs> <laughs> but, but that aside, and with, with the end of the rehearsal, we said, well, look, we're going to go to the pub like, oh, well, you've got us. I said, well, you're a straight edge. I said, have you ever been? No, no, no. I said, well, come down to the pub. I said, we're not going to get drunk. We're just going to have a pint, you know, because we finished work. Well, we did. On the social. <laughs> and, and he was great. And we wouldn't have him because he, he gets really recognised a lot, you know. Yeah. But he came and he sat in the pub. So it was a real first. He'd never, ever done it. And he's travelled. We've never, never been in a pub. <laughs> so, yeah. he's, done the, uh, he's done the forward to the book, you know. I mean, fact, God bless him. He, so I guess the last time I emailed him, he asked me a question was like, Four days ago, he just said the book's done. I can't. <laughs> and uh, you know, and he was just great. He's just really great. He always gets back straight away. Really glad you're out there doing the songs. He's, you know, he said, "Oh, I'm writing new songs at the moment. You know, the band's writing new songs. I've got some lyric. Can I send them to you?" you know, send them anytime. You know, and that, he's just been so supportive. So, that, which is how strange is that? Brilliant. Can I can I say one story about Lee when he went to the, the rehearsal? And, uh, he's, he's, he's turned up and uh, they're all, the guys are already there and so he's kind of walked through and he's kind of, he said to me, he took a minute, he was like, what are you doing here? And you got Henry on him, so he's you, Lee, in for a penny, in for a pound, doing this, it's okay. And I walked into the kitchen and there's Henry Rollins and he said he's about a foot smaller than you think he is, he's about a foot wider than you think he is. He said, and he's, he's making this coffee, and he's coffee. And he said suddenly it's like, Lee's like, oh, I can't believe I'm doing this. And he said, Rollins is this schoolboy fan. I said, oh, I can't believe I'm doing this. And he said, we're both kind of, like, he's kind of schoolboy fans. He said, and, so he's made me a cup of coffee. The next thing, he said, we go into the rehearsal room, and all I can say is the man that's made me a cup of coffee, he stood there, he's kind of wound it around, and he said, he's exploded and he's just become Mount Vesuvius next to me. Like, you know, the man who's making the coffee has become Mount Vesuvius, and that kind of intensity. It, and, it, it's extraordinary. He suddenly is the height you think he is. Yeah. So he goes from being small and you think to oh, it's the bloke out of Black Flag. Ah! Yeah. And, uh, and it really is. And he just went, oh, I kind of grew. I don't know if you remember it, but he yeah, I, well, everyone that's... assumes that we just sat up for the like, um, We were in the, in the round. By, by the second verse, he's sweating and punching the air and, and, and just incredible. You know? And he's just going madder. You, you can't. It's, it's very hard to put into words, but the, the, the sort of power that comes off it was extraordinary. And, and you uh, also did that, you know, when he's we're doing something I said, and I got to the mic, and he's doing yeah. something, and I started doing the back of my and I said, "Was that all right?" And he said, "I don't know. No one's ever sung with me before." <laughs> 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 and then Ruffy goes to him at the gig. Henry, um, do you do us a favour? He said, do us a favour, don't wear shorts. But <laughs> <laughs> he didn't, because he always wears... <coughs> well, he said, we can't have shorts. And I said, look, Apple would never ever <laughs> And he did, and he wore long trousers. <laughs> <laughs> <Tom Ed. laughs> You've got to have rules, haven't you? I know it's yeah. tough, but you've got to have rules. <laughs> Any more questions? Was he your first choice? Do you want to come up? Was Rollins the first choice? Staring, yeah, yeah. Rock, staring yeah. at the Rude Boys as a lyric. Who was it who was staring at the Rude Boys? <laughs> it's in the book. I know that story. I haven't got to that bit yet. <laughs> yeah. I think it was at the gig at Nashville where it all kicked off. Yeah, but it was Malcolm that's staring at yeah. the Rude Boys. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because it was like that, and, and the book opens with that now, and uh, yeah, it's the book, it's the story of the Nashville, it was really like that, it was really scary. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I was going to say they were going to come back in there the second time, I think it was that one. I think it was, there, there was some, some, I can't remember which particular mob, what mob it was, came down, uh, and we had some pretty heavy duty people in, in that, with our firm, you know. That, you know, that would not we didn't have a firm, but they used to come along. We had some serious dudes. You know, Mr. Mr. Um, the councilman. Yeah, um, the councilman. Yeah, the councilman. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Oh, no, he was a serious bit of work. <laughs> but, uh, but I think it all went horribly wrong when Paul Fox came out and said, if you all like Adolf Hitler so much, why don't you fuck off back to Germany? <laughs> <laughs> Adolf Hitler's gun. He's going to say, Adolf Hitler's gun, and it all kicked off. <laughs> 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 that, that gig, it's, 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 the, it's the forward, the, the intro, it's the, after the Henry's forward, there's a little bit, and it's about that gig, and, and with the gig that we did with Neville Staples last week, there were two guys who were at that gig, yeah, and one of them was got, got knifed, and the other one got beaten to a... 
sort of pulp or something, but they were wonderful. Wonderful. We wonderful. Cut them got nutted. That's the thing, he got nutted, and as the skin had like, learnt, I suppose, that, and he trod on his foot like that, and as he nutted him, so he went back and he broke his ankle. So, and he said, but my mate said, well, he went so mad. <laughs> Because he broke his he didn't know he broke his hand. He got up, I like, jumped back into him and took a couple out, you know. <laughs> and then on the way home, he's going, oh, I can't believe it. <laughs> <laughs> the other bloke went, oh, I've got all this stuff under there, my arm, you've got stains in us. How weird. Bad times. Yeah, they were really bad times. <laughs> so you're still a family bum then? <laughs> oh, we still a family bum. <laughs> Well, got families, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, I know, no, I think, I think um, really, um, well, it's lucky. I mean, I've never, I've always said I don't ever, because I've had a bit of a life, I've had a lovely life, you know, mad and crazy times. I'm pretty old now. <laughs> I'm not so around, but I get free travel in London. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you've got another no, and the thing yeah. is, I, I always say for a joke, you know, I, if, I, if I didn't know I'd live this long, I'd take better care of myself. And, and I've always said I don't have an addictive gene, but I think there's more to it than that. I, I now believe that, I think if you've got people around you that love you and you sort of care about, you don't, you don't choose, you don't choose to do things that destroy your life, or you, you know, because, because you get that, you know, and it's, they, they, I think they've tested lab rats with heroin and more, heroin and coke in the water, and if they isolate their lab rats, and they've got no, they'll, they'll go for that because they want to make sense of their miserable life. But if the rats are in a family group, they tie it and then they, get, they stick to the water because they don't want to. They don't want to lose that love. You know what I mean? So you I'm still, you still, like still knock them out with each other. That's what I'm saying. Like, they, I still I, knock them out with with, with each other. Oh yeah, yeah. You know, me and him. Yeah, share rooms. You know, like we're on tour. Yeah, we're trying to. We're trying to. We're trying to have our separate rooms. Sometimes we have our separate rooms. It's nice, but but I mean we do. We have we have to have separate rooms sometimes because we fucking laugh so much. Because really, you know, within about five minutes of being awake, usually we're both in tears, like laughing because you know telling a story. Yeah, of course we're very very. We, we do get on exceptionally well, which really helps, you know, with, with that. Yeah. There's two things actually that really come through in the book. First, if everyone mentioned that, that they're married to twins, so yeah. there's this interesting family dynamic there. And then when we're talking about um, Smack, you know, which became a big feature of the band, it was, it was, you know, Malcolm was heavily into to heroin. Foxy was interested in it as well because of the, the crowd that he hung out with, and then Ruffy nearly went to the brown, and it was sex who pulled him back because he didn't want to look like a prat in front of sex. It's a beautiful story. That well, you could say pull him back, but actually all I said was wanker. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I want to write represent, you just need to be a little love. <laughs> <laughs> so I was just about to say, I mean, you know, I'm on a drink, falling downstairs, and he only has to raise an eyebrow, and just like, <laughs> Whatever it takes, lads. Well done. Yeah. 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 We're going to um, just go down the pub. We're going to have five minutes. Have a 